Hi everyone, it's Monica, and welcome back to TaylorMade Cards for You. Well, Happy New Year! This is my first video in 2020, and I'm excited to share with you my new kit called Soda Fountain Shop. Now, this is a really pretty kit, I have to admit. It has a lot of pastel colors, which is perfect for Valentine's Day. But not only that, but it would work for birthdays as well, or any special occasion where you want to give a sweet card to a sweet person. So over the next couple of days, I'm going to be sharing with you some designs using this kit. Um, the uh, card that we're going to be creating today is the passport card, but I did uh, want to share with you one of the designs I'm going to be sharing with you in a couple of days. And this is a uh, pocket card, and it has a lot of places where you can tuck ephemera, which is what I love to do. Um, but I just wanted to give you a sneak peek of that because we're going to be creating that in a couple of days. Now, I did uh, type out the measurements for you for the passport card, but there is one mistake. Now, where it shows the 4.75 by 4.5, we actually want to change that. Now, that measurement should actually be 2.75 by 3.5, and, and that's going to be one of the pieces that's going to cover the inside uh, where I just flipped over a second ago. Um, but when we actually get to that part, I will uh, remind you that this is going to be a little bit smaller than actually indicated on your menu. All right, so we're also, like I said, going to be using the Bow Bunny stamp set, and the ink that I'm going to be using is Black Archival ink. Uh, so for ease, I went ahead and I cut out all the pieces uh, just so we don't have to waste our time cutting out pieces. You have your measurements. You just want to decide what paper you're using what on. Now this piece right here is your 7 inches by 5 and 2 5. And this is going to be the base of your card. And uh, you're going to want to go ahead and cut it down. And then you're going to want to score it uh, at about 2 and 3 fourths. Uh, so I'm just showing you the measurement here. Uh, you want to make sure that when you fold it over that it is nice and crisp because this is going to be the base of your card. So once you've got it scored or lined up on your scoreboard, you want to go ahead and score it. And again, it's at two and three fourths. And then once you score it down, you're going to go ahead and pivot it to the right. And then you're going to score it again at about three and a half. And that's going to create a rectangle and you're going to want to go ahead and cut that out. Uh, because you're not going to need that piece. You can save it though if you want to use it for a tuck inside of the card, uh, but it's not a piece that you're necessarily going to need, uh, but that's entirely up to you. So uh, the scored lines make it really easy to cut. You're just going to go ahead and just cut straight across and then up and down, and then you're going to have a nice base for your passport card. And then at this point, you can go ahead and take your corner rounders and round your corners. Uh, I like the look of the rounded corners. I always round my corners when I'm making my passport cards, um, and I just think it makes a nice finished look. Okay, so now you have your nice uh, base of your card, just like the one that I'm showing you here, and it's going to fit really nicely into an A2 envelope. Uh, and I did size these that way, so that way they can uh, work just like a card, um, but just a little added. You can add your... Uh, gift cards in there. You can add little notes. Uh, it makes it a really fun card, but it will definitely fit into an A2 envelope. All right. So like I said, you want to go ahead and round your corners and then uh, we're going to go ahead and start some stamping. Now, typically at this point, I would put my second page in, but because we're going to do some stamping, I want to go ahead and get the stamping out of the way so that way we can make sure it's nice and dry before we actually start adding our pieces. So uh, go ahead and round your corners and then you're going to take your second piece which is your 4.75 by 4.25 uh, and this is going to be your second page and you're going to want to score that um, at about a half an inch and then uh, once you have it scored then again just take your corner rounder and uh, round the corners so that way you'll have some nice edges all right so uh, before we actually adhere this to the base, uh, we're going to go ahead and do some stamping. And the stamping that we're going to do is the piece that's going to cover your back page. Um, as you can see, the inside of the page uh, or the card is uh, white, and we want to go ahead and decorate that up. So we're going to take that pink, uh, the pink piece of paper, which is going to measure five inches by four inches. Uh, and then you're going to want to round the corners just like I'm doing here. 
Now, uh, remember the left side of your card, the bottom piece is not rounded. So you're only going to want to round the top two corners and your right corner. Okay. Um, we're going to also add a little pocket and this pocket is what's going to hold all of that nice fun ephemera uh, that you've been seeing here. And the kit that you're getting um, has a page full of ephemera that you can use not only to decorate the card, but to stick into the pockets as well. Now the piece that you're going to use for your pocket is the one that measures four inches by two inches. And you're just going to want to add some adhesive. I'm using some wet glue here, uh, which is my uh, three in one beacon or the Faber tack that I've been using. And you're just going to add some adhesive to the left and the right and also on the bottom. And then you want to just give it a minute to dry. Now you're probably going to need to uh, trim it just a bit, um, depending on how you've measured your cardstock, uh, but just kind of Keep an eye on that. And then what I like to also do is I like to add some decorative uh, washi tape to the top part of the pocket just to help secure it and also give it a little bit more design. Okay, so once you have your washi tape uh, adhered, then we're ready to do some stamping. Now the stamp set that we're going to be working with is from Bow Bunny and it's called the Sweet uh, Shop Stamp Set. And this stamp set is actually what um, inspired me to create my kit. Now this stamp set is available in the shop and I think I have three left. So I will make sure that I leave a link below if any of you want to pick up this stamp set. But it is a great stamp set and it works so well with this kit. You're gonna find that there's lots of places to add these stamps. Now the first stamp that we're gonna be using is the uh, word stamp. And this word stamp uh, is definitely vintage inspired. It's perfect uh, for a sort of a sweet candy shop type of a card uh, because it is uh, French wording for I believe probably a chocolate shop um, but it's going to fit perfectly on this uh, back part of your passport card and what's really nice about this is when you close your card you're going to be able to see some of the wording but when I first saw this stamp set uh, I just loved the words um, definitely some great images on this one and like I said it's a perfect addition uh, to create with using uh, your kit along with the stamp set. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Misty and I'm going to line up my stamp and we're going to go ahead and stamp it. Now you're going to see that this stamp set stamps really nice. I really only had to use one impression uh, when I stamped and it was nice and crisp. Uh, it didn't stick, it didn't smear, it was just perfect. So I was really happy with that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just line it up and uh, push down on my Misty so it does grab my stamp. And then again, I am using black archival ink, um, but you could certainly use any type of ink. I think a nice blue ink would be really pretty. Perhaps a bright pink would be nice as well. Um, but I went ahead and I went with the traditional black archival ink and I stamped my image. And it is a perfect addition um, to the back part of this card. Okay, so as you see, I got a really great impression. Um, so I really only had to add ink one time. I did come back a second time because it looked like the bottom uh, sentence didn't quite get the, uh, the letters. So I went ahead and I just kind of closed my top part of my Misty and re-stamped it to make sure that I got all of my letters. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this out of my stamping platform and put it aside just to make sure it dries and I don't smear it um, as I'm putting my card together. All right, so the next card we're going to go ahead and stamp, or I should say the card stock we're going to stamp, is the second page of your card. And this is the uh, blue page that I'm showing you here. And um, when you close your passport card, you're going to see that you have some room on the right side of your card, which is perfect for the stamp that we're going to be adding. Uh, the stamp that we're going to be using is that long uh, candy jar, I guess, um, and it's going to fit really nice on the edge of your second page. So again, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, kind of figure out exactly where I want it to go. And as you can see, there's plenty of room if you use the measurements that I provided. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and take our piece of paper again, add it to our stamp platform, and stamp that candy jar. And again, I am going to be using the black archival ink, um, and you're going to see that it's a really nice crisp impression. I only had to stamp it one time, and it uh, stamped perfectly. So um, with the Misty, I'm just lining it up. I'm going to go ahead and close the stamping platform so it grabs the stamp, and then uh, add my ink and stamp my image. 
And then once we get the image stamped, we're going to go ahead and add the second page to the base of our card. Now, when you are adding the page to your base, there's a couple ways that you can work it. You can certainly use some uh, tape, which is what I'm going to be using off of my ATG gun, or you can use the liquid adhesive. I think anyone works, but when I'm working with a small area, sometimes when you add the liquid adhesive, it does kind of spill over to the edges. So you want to be careful with that. And that's why I decided to use my uh ATG gun um, in such a small place because I didn't want to uh, be concerned about the wet adhesive um, spilling over and it kind of gluing my card shut. So I went ahead and worked with the dry uh, tape runner um, to add my second piece. Now the second piece again is you have that fold over that's a half an inch and it's just really easy to add some tape to it using your tape runner. And I went over it twice just to make sure it was nice and secure and then I added it to the base of my card. And just be mindful when you are adding it to your card base that it does fold nicely. You're gonna have a, a crease right in the middle and you wanna make sure you give a little bit of room for it to close so that way you don't have any obstruction when you're trying to close your card. Okay, so uh, once we get our second page added, we're gonna go ahead and add the back page which is uh, the pink with the white heart pocket. Um, and for that, I am going to be using some wet adhesive. Uh, one thing I do like about using the wet adhesive is it just gives you room to kind of manipulate it to make sure that it's exactly straight. Um, and you should be good to go with the measurements that I gave you, but certainly test your measurements before you actually glue things down. Um, I know sometimes even just an inch can make a difference. So just make sure you're comfortable with your measurements before you actually glue it down. For the most part, you should be good to go. Um, but on some of them, you may need to do a little bit of trimming if you want to show uh, some of that white space on the background. So I went ahead and I added my, uh, my wet adhesive and I'm going to go ahead and add it to the back panel. And um, this will pretty much complete the back panel. We're going to go ahead and add some more of your cardstock to some of those white areas, but this pocket is going to be uh, good to go to add some of your fun ephemera. Okay, so now that we have our back piece glued down, we're going to go ahead and work on the left side uh, panel, and this is the pink cardstock. Now, on your measurements that I gave you, um, I had indicated that this is your 4 inches by 4.25, uh, but in measuring it again, it looks like it is a little bit off. So I do apologize. At the end of the video, I'm going to give you another list of all the measurements so that way you'll have them um, since we are modifying as we're going along here. Now this piece I actually cut down to 3.75 by 4.75 and then I trimmed it a little bit. Remember, these uh, measurements aren't exact. You're going to have to kind of uh, figure out exactly how much white space you want to have showing. So when you trim down your cardstock before you actually glue it down or start stamping, just measure it against the card base where you're going to actually adhere it to ensure you have the right measurements. Um, sometimes these measurements, like I said, are a little bit off. You might be like a, a small uh, millimeter bigger or smaller, um, but I just wanted to give you some easy measurements to start out with. All right, so now that we um, have our piece measured down to the size that we need, we're going to go ahead and add another stamp. And again, this is from the Bow Bunny stamp set. Um, and I'm just using this really sweet uh, stamp that has like a cake and a cherry on top. Um, and it's going to really make a nice addition to your uh, inside of your card. So I kind of played around with the images. I wasn't really sure exactly what I was going to use. But ultimately, I ended up did using the one on the left that I'm playing with. Um, and I'm going to go ahead again use my black archival ink to stamp it down. And then once I have it stamped down, uh, I'm going to go ahead again and use my wet glue to add it to the base of my card. Uh, and when you're using this wet glue, you really don't need a lot. It really is some great adhesive, um, which gives you some wiggle room to add your, your cardstock. So you don't have to use a lot. You want to make sure it's not going to seep out through the sides when you're adhering it to your card base. You just need a little bit um, on each side. And I actually do add some glue to the middle portion as well, just for stability. Uh, but that probably isn't necessary. I just like for my cards to hold together since I do sometimes sell them in my shop. Um, so just, you know, uh, use your uh, archival ink, stamp down your image, give it just a second to dry because you don't want your ink to be smearing, and then add your adhesive to add it to your card base. All right, so once I have that adhered, I am going to um, add a little tab to help turn the page. And this is from a die that I've had in my stash. I don't even remember 
what company I got it from. I'll try to find it for the link. Um, but this is just a fun little tab to be able to turn your uh, pages. Um, and it really makes a cute addition as well. And I am going to go ahead and add that to the first page once I finish adhering this uh, cardstock um, because I wanted to add the tab before I actually add any decoration to the page. Uh, so as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of push this down a bit. I'm not smearing over the image just in case it is still a little bit wet. Um, and then I have my first and my second page complete. Now, the last thing that we need to do, of course, is decorate the inside portion of the last page. And this is where I had indicated in the beginning of the video where your measurement is a little bit off. Now, the piece that I'm going to be using after I add my tab to the front page is that little uh, receipt page that you see on the top right hand side and we're going to be trimming that down and I think that's where I kind of messed up on my measurements because I actually measured the the little tab not realizing that we were going to cut it cut it down um, so we're going to just cut that down after we get our uh, tabs adhered okay so that receipt uh, page that you see that we're going to be using here in just a minute is part of the kit as well. And um, there is also a little pocket that holds this receipt, uh, but I decided to use it as decoration for the inside of my card. And we're going to be cutting this down uh, to 2.75 by 3 inches. And this is what's going to cover the inside portion of your smallest page. Um, and as far as um, the, the width, it's pretty close. Um, I think it already is three inches, um, but just make sure you measure it. I just think it's a little bit too long for this page. So we're going to cut off part of the bottom um, and it will cut off part of that little ice cream soda, but it's not a big deal. It really looks cute when you get it into your page. So just trim it down a bit. Um, and then again, you want to round your corners and adhere it using your wet adhesive. All right, so once you have your card base completely decorated, you've got the outside decorated as well as the inside, now it's time to add some of those fun little embellishments. And inside the kit, like I said, you're gonna get several of your ephemera pieces to be able to choose how you wanna decorate your card. Um, I really love the little girl with the big hat and the big bow that's drinking the soda. Uh, that's a great uh, piece for the front of your card and it fits perfectly. But there are, are also some other pieces that work nicely as well. You have the um, blueprint for the soda machine that fits really nicely. Um, or you can cut down some of those pieces. Who's to say that it has to fit perfectly on that front? Um, but there's a lot of options. Um, and um, I would just say, you know, when you're playing with your kit, just try different pieces. Like I, you see here, I was seeing if I wanted to stamp the image and I think that would be a cute card as well to stamp with the bow bunny stamp um, or you can just kind of play around with some of the ephemera lots of choices and that's really what I try to do with these kits I don't want you to be able to just um, make one kit and here's that little blueprint I was showing uh, discussing a few minutes ago but there's just lots of choices and that's really what I try to do on my kit is give you choices so you can make multiple different types of cards. Uh, you're going to get the same kind of base, but you can kind of mix and match your paper. You can add different pieces of ephemera. So each card is just a little bit different. And that's what makes it fun about these kits is um, you can, you know, buy the kit and have it in your stash and then print out what you need whenever you need to make a card. Now remember, we do have um, some design team members that also are creating videos using this kit. So I will make sure that I have links to all of their videos below. So be sure to check it out so you can see um, all the variety of uh, designs that you can use with this kit. There's so much you can do with it. And not only do you get the passport kit, but you're going to get the bundle as well. So if you're a journal maker, you can certainly create some journals. And I think some of the team uh, is going to be creating some journals with the bundle. So hopefully you'll get some ideas with that as well. All right, now I am going to be back in a couple of days to share with you another design uh, for a fun pocket card. Um, and that's the one that I shared with you in the beginning of the video. Uh, lot, a lot of similar uh, 
items that you can use in this card. It has pockets um, that you can store your ephemera, uh, add gift cards. It's just a really cute design. Uh, just to give you another option with the kit. And then I am going to be coming back again and we're going to create kind of like a folio to store some of your extra paper. Sometimes when we are working with our kits, we don't necessarily use all of our paper and we don't want to throw it away. So I wanted to create a nice little folio to um, add some of our paper just to give you an idea for some storage. So I hope that you've enjoyed the new Soda Fountain Shop kit and that I've given you some ideas for using the kit. As always, I'll leave a list of all the products that I've used to create the card along with the links to the store. Now remember, at the end of the video, I did provide you with a new set of measurements on the menu so you can stop the video and get your measurements. Now, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're going to be doing some new things here in 2020. Um, I'm going to be showing you some techniques on uh, journal uh, creating, and we're going to take a step by step. I haven't been much of a journal creator, so we're going to do this together. And I think that if we just kind of uh, develop some techniques along the way, when we actually go to put our journal together, it will be a lot easier and not so overwhelming. And don't forget, I have some links to some more videos below for some of the design team. And if you've enjoyed uh, this project using the uh, Soda Fountain Shop kit, hopefully you'll get some more ideas for the kit as well. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for stopping by and we'll see you again next time.